Inside Washington's Museum of the Bible, a single volume that is like no other. The so-called Slave Bible. Remarkable not for what's in it, but for what's not. So about 90% of the Old Testament's been removed and about 50% of the New Testament's been removed. Uh, to put it another way, a normal King James Version has 1,189 chapters in it. Uh, the Slave Bible has only 232. Missing are chapters and verses that might have encouraged uprisings. Book of Exodus, redacted. No story of Moses demanding Pharaoh, let my people go. Gone is Galatians, and the verse, There is neither bond nor free, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And no Jeremiah, woe unto him that useth his neighbor's service without wages. What they've left in are verses such as Ephesians 6, 5, which is the famous verse, Slaves be obedient to your master. Looking at this Bible, it's hard to tell that anything's been taken out of it. That's correct. I mean, it looks like a normal book. For many enslaved Africans, this would have been the first time they were exposed to the Bible. A Bible selectively edited to instill obedience, using religion to underpin the horror of slavery. When people encounter this exhibit, what lasting impression do you want them to leave with? Well, we want to pass the message on that may this never happen again. Uh, the Bible itself is a, is a whole book. It's not one that you get to carve up and use this piece or that piece. The slave Bible designed to repress rebellion, but it didn't work. Enslaved people in the Caribbean constantly fought against slavery until emancipation. I think it's very relevant to understand our history, not just American history, but our African-American history, our roots and how we got to this point. A dark chapter in the history of the good book. Jeff Bennett, NBC News, 